there's all kinds of different ways that uh, people lead. For me personally, I think it's about creating an environment to let people uh, be the best they can be. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. This is Enix Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architectural practice. If you haven't already headed over and gotten access to our free 60-minute firm owner training, what are you waiting for? Head over to smartpracticemethod.com and discover our decade-plus experience condensed into a 60-minute training for firm owners just like you. Whether you're a current firm owner or aspiring firm owner, that's a training you're not going to want to miss. Head over to smartpracticemethod.com. Today, it's my pleasure to speak with Nikki Dennis-Stevens, Honorary AIA. Nikki is the Executive Director of AIA California, and she has set a high bar for other regional, state, and local components and has bolstered the AIA's efforts in tackling the most pressing issues facing the profession. And I, I, I can vouch for this because I'm an AI California member. Since taking the helm of AI California in 1999, Stevens' leadership has positioned the chapter as a leader in member service, government advocacy, and public engagement. In 2003, she convened a group of talented volunteers to define a new approach to project delivery. Her efforts resulted in the landmark publications Integrated Project Delivery, a Working Definition, and Experiences in Collaboration, both of which have been heralded as the best primers for integrated project delivery. The initiative quickly spread through AI, prompting the development of Integrated Product Delivery, a guide in 2007, which shared California's design and construction process with the nation. Nikki, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Enoch. Excited to be here. It's great to have you here. Yeah. And first of all, thank you from us, all of our listeners, everyone, architects in California, and for everything that you do for architects and for the AI. We appreciate it. Well, thank you. It's been a, it's been a privilege and um, uh, an exciting journey to, to work with the architectural profession. Um, I've been with AIA California for 23 years. Um, I haven't been at the helm for that entire time, but I've worked, uh, you know, through this organization in a variety of uh, different positions and um, feel like I have kind of a, a, a broad look at uh, all of the different ways that, that we help uh, the profession be successful. So. Absolutely. And I'm curious. So back in 1999, when you originally started working for AI California, how did that occur? Was it something that you specifically sought out the AI or was it, hey, this job sounds interesting. I have a background in this kind of thing. And then it evolved into this. How did the, can you tell me about that? Sure. It's, um, you know, this is, somebody just asked me, um, you know, what my, what my educational background was. And, and then when I told them, they said, well, you know, how, how did that relate to what you're doing today? And, um, uh, I have a background uh, in fundraising. Um, I did fundraising um, for uh, California State University, Sacramento in their athletics department. Um, and um, that translated into, uh, I moved over to the March of Dimes and did charitable fundraising. And it was just one of those, those odd um, things that uh, someone on the board of the March of Dimes was uh, the contract lobbyist for AIA California. Um, my family um, had a small general, um, it was a small general contractor here in Sacramento, and uh, my, my dad said, go work for the architects, they're the good guys. And so, um, you know. You, <laughs> you know really, that's yeah. great. In my, in, my, in my 20s, I thought, well, gosh, you know, you know it, this will be my next job, and, you know, who knows um, where, where I'll ultimately land up, and, uh, you know, I've been here now um, a chunk of time, and it's it's been really um, it's been really an amazing journey, um, and I'm excited about where we're headed. So. How would you describe your goal at the executive director level? What what does an executive director of the AI do at a state like California? Yeah, so you mentioned um, in in the introduction. So we are the largest um, component of AIA. We have a, a little over eleven thousand members, um, and it's it's interesting what I what I do here at the state level is really marshal um, the resources and that's both you know human as well as as financial to um, to address the issues that are facing um, the profession and help architects be successful and so um, you know I, I know that that's kind of a, a double speak for um, you know an administrative role but I I, I really take um, you know I, I really take the opportunity in working with architects and and what we work together um, in partnership with 
with the members. And, and that's the part that um, excites me and, and still, um, you know, inspires me to, to get up and do what I do every day is, is, you know, being um, good partners and being inspired by uh, the design process and the, the project management and the, the process that we use to um, get things done. Um, you know, we both bring something to the table and, um, you know, it is, it's a lot of fun to, uh, take an idea and, and get it to, uh, bring it to fruition. So and what are the, what are the biggest challenges that you're looking at right now regarding the, uh, the, the profession from your perspective? You know, um, I think the issues facing the profession, um, you know, I think there's, there are definitely things that are specific to, um, to architecture, um, and to the built environment. But I also think, you know, we're also, the, the profession is faced with some of the larger societal issues that we're seeing in, you know, in every um, business sector. And so, um, you know, as we talk about some of the big issues facing, you know, our, our state, our nation, our planet, um, uh, addressing climate action and, and finding a way that um, architects can really um, lead and move the entire construction industry forward in, you know, the design and, and creation of, of, uh, buildings that are, that perform well, that are, um, resilient and responsive, um, is absolutely, you know, number one thing on our priority. Um, and the other, you know, the flip side of that is as we're doing that, what does it mean, um, to the communities that, that architects serve and how do we, as, as we're collectively investing in this, this huge development um, of, you know, uh, environmentally responsive buildings, how are we looking um, at kind of the social um, and social justice issues um, that, you know, are, pl- are plaguing our country? Um, and finding ways that, you know, how can we help architects um, be, you know, not just knowledgeable, but how do we actually move the needle forward in, in terms of equity um, diversity and inclusion. And, you know, I, those are buzzwords that get thrown around a lot um, in, in a lot of different ways. But, you know, I think there's, there's um, you know, ways that we need to tackle all three of those kind of buckets. Um, and that's, you know, one of our big initiatives that we're, we're, we're pushing forward. So. Let's, let's talk about climate change. Yeah. Architects are one seat at the table when we're looking at projects or master plans or developments happening what have you seen to be the most effective ways for architects to influence that conversation and help to promote uh, more sustainable strategies? So I think, um, you know, it's definitely a multi-pronged approach. And so there's, you know, being proactive and architects having the, the knowledge and the skills and the tools to be able to articulate um, what that looks like. Um, tell the story both, you know, in terms of to their clients and in, in their communities about why this makes sense. Um, but I think there's the other side of this is, um, on the codes and code advocacy. And that's something that at AI California, we've, we've really invested in and, and are working to be proactive in changing, um, the conversation about the building code. So here in California, we um, we have Cal Green. So that was the nation's first green building code, um, and it really set the standard for for a lot of things, including the International Building Code. Um, but as things have progressed, Cal Green hasn't kept up, and so that's something that um, we've picked that mantle back up and brought a number of stakeholders to the table, from from state agencies to um, our partners in the in the construction process. Um, contractors, engineers, um, bring all of those folks together to to really start talking about how, where do we go from here, and you know what is going to be needed to um, to really make the meaningful change that is going to have to happen in a relatively short amount of time. Um, you know, the the other side of this is um, we talk a lot about resiliency, and uh, there's you know obviously we're all seeing um, the impacts of the changing weather patterns uh, in California, we don't we see them in different ways than we see them in the rest of the, the nation. But if you look at just you know our big uh, drought cycles that we're having right now, and and 
you know, when we do have rain, it's for, a, you know, a more intense amount of time. And so how do we, how do we prepare um, and help the local communities um, talk about resiliency and work together uh, with their with their neighbors um, to create comprehensive plans. And and by no means do we do this alone. Um, this is something AI California works with uh, our network of 21 local um, chapters through throughout the whole state um, in partnership to have those conversations at the local municipality level and. Uh, our role is really to provide kind of again those tools and resources, the information, the talking points to to help them, um, you know, both tell the story as well as offer um, good counsel. So, um, and you know, telling the story, what would that look like? Nikki, say I'm an I'm an architect approaching a project. How would how would I? Yeah, implement that? it's um, you know when we looking at. Being able to, um, well, I'm going to back up a little bit. One of the things that I've always appreciated uh, for our, with in working with architects is your ability to envision something that I couldn't have even thought of. And so, you know, if if I'm, you know, I'm relatively, um, you know, I'm more knowledgeable about architecture than the average homeowner, let's say. Um, but you know, somebody will think, well, gosh, I just want to put on this addition. Um, an architect can come in and say, well, maybe you don't even need the addition. You need to do something different. And while we're doing that, you know, reconfiguration of your current, um, you know, footprint, let's think about how do we make this building um, more uh, perform better in terms of your, you know, your energy bills, your uh, water savings, all of the kind of low hanging fruit. But then how are we um, positioning it and positioning you as the homeowner um, to protect that investment over in response to this changing climate. So does that mean, um, you know, a, a changing um, the uh, the exterior cladding in some way? Does it mean, you know, looking at all of the different uh, systems that go into a building? And, you know, I'm using a, a very, um, you know, kind of small scale example, but, you know, obviously you can you put that on a much larger scale and, and looking at ways that, um, you know, both individuals, companies, whatever can be, more resilient in the face of, of these disruptions caused by the, the changing environment. So. And in addition to these, so what, what are some of the issues that you find that uh, your constituents, so the architects of California, uh, in terms of their practices or the industry, what other concerns have you seen from your perspective? Um, you know, I think architects are, are continuously uh, faced with uh, lower profit margins, lower, um, their role within the project is not as valued, um, as some others in the team. And if, if we inherently believe that architects have that, that education skills and training to, to be this, um, you know, master and general of, of the, of the team and have the ability to, bring people together and build consensus and, and address, um, you know, the client's bigger, bigger, um, you know, vision. It, it's important that we find ways to help architects be successful. And that's one of the things, you know, in, in, um, you mentioned your small, uh, practice method.com, um, website and, and all of the tools that are available there, you know, helping architects have access to, um, to, to business uh, methods and, and uh, best practices to help them, you know, set up their structure to be successful. It also helps their, their profitability and bottom line. Um, something that uh, another issue that people are facing uh, across the board is a shortage in, in the workforce. And this is, um, I would say, probably right now is priority one um, in terms of, of how firms are able to practice. I just had a call uh, with a member last week who um, she said, you know, for the first time in my career, I've worked really hard to get to this, this senior position. And the first time in my career, I can win a project, but I can't, I can't staff it. And she was so frustrated by this. And, um, you know, I, I get, you know, probably a dozen calls a month of people looking for, for someone um, at different stages of the career. Um, you know, there was a point when, you know, everybody was looking for that kind of, um, you know, mid-career professional because, you know, during the last recession, we lost this, this whole chunk of the profession. I will say right now, they're looking for everybody. 
Um, and I think it's, you know, I think it's a great time to uh, be an architect. I think there's a lot of value that architects bring, um, you know, to, to the process. Uh, but I think we need to also look at how do we change um, what people, uh, especially at the early stages of the career, what they're doing to both keep them in the profession as well as to enhance their value in terms of, of clients' um, perceptions of what we're bringing to the table. And it's not just about, um, you know, the building details, but uh, what are the other skills that uh, people, that architects and, and people in the design process can bring uh, to a project. Okay. And so recently, this was, this has happened, I guess, earlier this year. And uh, again, you don't have to comment on this if you don't want to, because uh, I didn't prep you for this. But you remember there was the uh, there was a bit of controversy down at SciArc, mm. and it regarded um, wages for interns or some exploitative practices that we've seen in the industry over time. And you know the the architects who are more mature in their career are like, yeah, hey, look, when we when we went through the ranks. Yeah, we uh, you know, we we had a job at the bar, a waiter and waitress on the weekend just to make ends meet. We we're working for free, and um, you know, times have changed, and so there was, there was uh, there was that incident there. Is is what was the AI's reaction to that, and is the AI doing anything to, to, kind of, you know, you talked about equity, diversity, inclusion. You know, it kind of seems like a bit of equity there, an equity issue in terms of pay scales, and and really. If we're going to solve the issue, it seems, the issue of labor and workforce, we need to have profitable firms that afford to be able to pay really good salaries and great working wages for our our interns and people coming up in the profession, or is that just wishful thinking? Well, I, I think it is a complex problem, I'll say that, but I um, just to, to address your question, um, you know, there is, I think, just as in human nature, there is this um, trope of, you know, well, I walked uphill both ways in the snow, um, so should you. And <laughs> I did. <laughs> My dad I'm did not, too. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's something that that we should or won't, that we should continue. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and you know, across the board, I know that people have worked hard to, to establish their firms, to get to a certain place in their career. And as I mentioned earlier, people, you know, firm owners are frustrated. They, they don't have the um, ability to um, command um, the workforce in the way that they've had in the past due to the changing social dynamics. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think that we are at a turning point and a tipping point. And I think the issue that happened at SciArc um, just shown a brighter light on it. Um, it is something that this idea of un, unpaid internships is something that um, AIA has. We've had, we've had a long-standing policy, 25 plus years, about uncompensated interns. And um, as part of our, I'll use one example as part of our awards process, that every entrant, um, you know, self-certifies that they don't employ um, un, unpaid interns. Um, but I, I'm not so naive to think that that also still isn't happening. And I, I think, um, you know, one of the, the things that we've done is we've established a very strong uh, community, our Academy for Emerging Professionals. Um, we've institutionalized this group, both in our governance structure as well as, as in the organization, to uh, be included in you know, the wide range of things that we're doing and to, to talk about, specifically right now, to talk about um, what's happening um, in the profession, what do they see and what do they want and need. And having that conversation is not easy. I'll be the first to say that. It's, um, you know, it's definitely challenging um, kind of the status quo and it's pushing back on a lot of long held beliefs. And, and I think part of that happen, it is happening in education. Part of that is happening in, you know, in firms, you know, of all sizes. And so, um, you know, I think our role in, in all of this is to um, have a place for that conversation to happen, um, to uh, set the bar for uh, the profession to 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 say here here's recommendations, here are best practices, here are um, here's what's happening in the profession. If and if you want to be competitive, if you want to um, you know um, engage and and keep um, the workforce um, that you have, and and you, if you want to grow 
you need to to be mindful of these of these issues. And here's ways that um, are meaningful uh, responses. And so again, it's you know I'm personally just a, a big believer that no one should start with a blank sheet of paper. Um, I know that you know even in the in the design process, that's the hardest. Um, thing to to do is to to start from square one sometimes, and so that's part of what AI California does is, um, you know, brings brings the community together and and both talks about these issues as well as um, you know provides you know some some intel and some insight on on how other people are addressing them. So, mm. what would you you've been with the AI California for twenty three years now? What are the trends? So you mentioned you've seen profit margins getting squeezed. You mentioned mm-hmm. there's been changes in the workforce. What are some other trends, like big picture trends, as you look back from when you started working at AI California till now? What have you seen? Um, so I will. Um, one of the other things that I see is in education. Um, the and and again, this is not just um, facing architectural education, but this this idea of of the investment that students put um, into uh, into their their uh, post secondary education and relatively um, are are not able to um, to command um, salaries to make that worthwhile and I think that is something that's um, you know we've definitely seen change or I've definitely seen change over the last you know 10 15 years that this idea that you know getting out of school with you know two three hundred thousand dollars in in um, you know, school debt and no real measurable way to uh, to pay that back is is you know it's it's definitely having an impact um, both on those students who are in school as well as in our conversations about how do we help people through this and and it's not I mean yes we need to increase scholarships we need to find other ways to um, to help students be successful. But it's also spurting a whole nother conversation about um, it's a point you mentioned earlier. How do we help firms be more profitable so that they can't so salaries do increase? And and ultimately, um, you know, we're we're challenging the schools to think differently about um, the the curriculum and and not in a way of you know um, taking anything away from the studio culture or the design education, but really enabling students to come out of school with very marketable um, skills. And, you know, we all hear these, these stories of, well, we lose, you know, half of architectural school students go to work for Pixar or, or gaming studios or whatever. Um, But the ones that are going to stay in the profession, um, let's enable them with more than just, you know, software training. It's, you know, some of the, um, the critical thinking, the consensus building, the, um, you know, the ability to synthesize information, those skills are really what architects bring to, to the table and having young people who um, can, can bring those skills to a firm, um, maybe not on day one, but definitely within that, that first year, I think is really important. And, you know, so being able to empower students um, and playing the long game, um, ensuring that we have, a, you know, a, a profession in the future that is going to be successful um, is one of the the trends that we're responding to right now. Thank you. So, AI involvement. Why? Why should architects be involved in the AI? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier. I, we we really. Um, I think one of the greatest things that AI does is is it brings the community together. Um, and that, that's at all levels, um, you know, whether you're in your, your local community and, and you sit down and, and work through a challenging um, problem that you're having, you know, in a, you know, with one of the, the local city governments or, you know, the, the plan check people um, to the state level when you're trying to, uh, I don't know, deal with an accessory dwelling unit and, uh, you know, how can um AIA California help you um, through that that process and working with the Housing and Community Development Agency all the way to national. I think there's, you know, one of the great things that AIA does is 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 this place that people can come together, um, brings the profession together. The other part um, that we're very proud of at, at the state level is our advocacy work, and so um, you know this is something that. It's really difficult for an individual architect to do alone, uh, to be a representative 
um, in front of the legislature or in the regulatory arena. So there are 16 different agencies that we monitor um, and are actively involved with that, that impact design and construction. Um, you know, from, from obvious uh, agencies like the California Architects Board or uh, the Division of the State Architect to, um, you know, the Air Resources Board and the California Energy Commission. And so, um, you know, 16 different agencies that we're, we're um, you know, keeping track of, um, minding the store. And we have a tremendous network of, of members who help us um, with that process and get involved and, and provide kind of that technical um, uh, support and, you know, really understanding of the issues and how it's affecting practice. And so, um, you know, we're bringing together those people to, um, to, to testify, to, um, to develop um, alternative language, to, to really, um, you know, be part of the conversation, you know, as, as the construction um, industry um, you know, it, it makes up such a huge sector uh, you know, of the GDP in California. We need to uh, really make sure that architects are part of of that conversation and have that seat at the table. And I, you know, I know that sounds a little trite because there are so many times that decisions are being made being made by developers or being made, um, you know, by by you know, uh, politicians who don't necessarily understand the impacts. Um, and I, you know, I used housing as an example earlier. Um, you know, there's this tremendous appetite and need for housing all across the state. And so, you know, there's a, uh, all these different solutions are being thrown out there without, uh, sometimes some, some thought being put into, you know, well, what does that, what does that really mean in terms of community? What does that mean in terms of, uh, of planning? And, um, you know, we're looking for ways, how do we get involved in that conversation so that we can, um, you know, kind of slow things down a little bit and have a more thoughtful conversation, because I know that's what architects are great at. And speaking of conversations, for you, leadership, leadership, what is leadership for you? Um, that's, that's interesting. So I think there's, um, there's all kinds of different ways that um, people lead. Um, I'll just, you know, for me personally, I think it's about um, creating an environment um, to let people uh, be the best they can be. Uh, it's and how do you how do you do that? Well, and I'm going to refer to you personally yeah, in terms of yeah, your team as well uh, as the people you bring together. I think um, you know. So I was very fortunate, and and part of the reason I've been with AIA so long is um, you know I've been given a lot of opportunities um, throughout my career. You mentioned one in the introduction about. Um, integrated project delivery. I am not an architect. I, um, you know, my my background is is very different. And um, I remember going to, uh, you know, our executive vice president Paul Welch at the time, and and saying, well, gosh, we really have to get involved in this issue. And you know, uh, this other staff person really needs to lead this issue. And and he turned to me and said, well, why 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 aren't you involved in this conversation? And I said, well, gosh, I don't know anything about, you know, about these things. And, and he said, well, this is an opportunity. And, um, it really kind of gave me a new, um, thing to, to focus on as well as it inspired me in looking at how architects could be more, um, collaborative in the process. And again, as a, as a relative lay person in, in this, it, I sometimes, you know, I ask those dumb questions about, well, why is it this way? And, um, you know, it, it turned into just a very early version of, you know, this frequently asked questions because um, there was a lot of people asking the, those same questions um, about architects role. And so when we talk about leadership, I think um, giving people opportunities, um, being that being a resource for them when, you know, when they um, you know, maybe don't have all of the skills yet. Uh, but creating a, an environment and a, and a culture that, um, you know, hire good people and let them do their job. And it, I will be the first to say it is tough. It is a lot easier just to do the thing than to, to um, watch somebody else either struggle through something or, um, you know, maybe it takes longer than you would have just done it. Um, but I also know that, you know, any successful enterprise, whether it's, you know, it's a firm, it's a, you know, it, it, it's an association or, um, you know, just any relationships, it, it really is a, uh, it's a culmination, sorry, of 
everyone's efforts and um, creating that environment that lets that happen, um, you know, is, is something that I that I continuously strive to do. Um, one thing I will no- I will say that I've noticed in being here long enough now, um, w- what people are looking for in terms of that opportunity and that involvement and being much more, um, I won't say forceful, but being more assertive in um, how they they articulate that those needs has definitely changed. And, you know, um, and I think as a leader, that's something that um, maybe I wasn't expecting, but it's something that I'm, I'm definitely responding to. And it's not always easy. It's hard to, you know, you think you're doing all these great things and then something comes out of, you know, out of left field that you say, well, gosh, you know, I'm doing, you know, these 10 things for you. And now you're asking for more. And, and when I really, when I get over the emotion and I really stop and think about what they're asking, you know, sometimes it's just tweak what we're already doing. Sometimes it's better than, than what we're doing. And sometimes you just can't do it. And, um, you know, that's my job is to figure out, well, how do we, you know, how, how can we um, create this environment that lets people, um, you know, be successful and have that autonomy, but yet um, gives them those, those safety nets when they need them. And because at the end of the day, um, you know, our internal complexity isn't, shouldn't be the members complexity. They, they don't need to see how, how the, the sausage is made, but they need to know that uh, they're going to have a meal at the end of it. And, um, you know, we've, you know, through this pandemic, we've grown in so many ways that um, I couldn't have even imagined, you know, three years ago. Um, and so um, I think it's been a it's been a, a test for me. But also, um, you know, when I look back on these last few years, it's it's been pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, we're in a we're in a very different position than we were before the pandemic. Um, I'm going to one other thing I just want to mention. So in part of, um, you know, my leadership of this organization and what I've been trying to do is, um, you know, as we've, we were largely reactionary in the early days of the pandemic and trying to, to, I've shifted that conversation to, okay, what does this organization look like now and where do we want to go? And, and we've spent a lot of time and, and effort on a new strategic plan. And I know everybody talks about, well, we need a strategic plan, but I will say this is, for us, it's um, it's a really um, bold look at where we're going as an organization to help architects solve some of these these really challenging issues. And of course, we will be there to help them in their practice and help them be successful. But I also think that you know, for for to address the issues that we spoke of earlier about climate action and about EDI and about housing and resiliency. How do we um, how do we make sure that architects are part of that conversation and and so that's you know what I'm really excited about um, this new plan. So. Wonderful, well, Nikki Dan Stevens, thank you so much for joining us here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Thanks so much. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.
That's a wrap. Okay. Well, I hope <laughs> I hope that was helpful. It was good. I really feel like it was that last question where I really just you just lit up. Oh well. It's you know, it's it's interesting. You you come into these things thinking, well, I want to hit these 20, 20 points, right? But yeah. um, you know, that's the part that I really um I am excited about the people I work with and the people I work for. So Yeah, yeah, I, I can tell. I can tell. It comes through and you know, I mean, we, we, I see your name all the time in our, your email blasts that come out to us AI California members. And, you know, ever since I've, for a long time, I've seen that you, uh, you know, it's, it, to me, it's really about leadership. I can see your leadership. You now, know, now you're, that you're, you're saying one thing I should have mentioned in earlier and maybe somehow we, um, so we also, um, in terms of advocacy, we sponsored the legislation to require zero net carbon design, continuing education. Um, and so I think, you know, when, that's both the the positive. It's very positive in terms of you know uh, moving the profession forward. But you know you also have folks who are thinking it's just one more thing that I have to do. Um, and so I, I think sometimes leadership is those hard things that it's not popular, but it's important. So. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, a lot of times leadership you do have to you 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 get haters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes. So yeah, anyways, yeah. well, um, please let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. I've, um, you know, I, I think that some of those, uh, those tools that you've mentioned, um, that, that, you know, you've created, we're getting ready to, um, develop, well, we're developed a series that we'll, um, uh, put online next year, um, kind of small firm resources and, you know, uh, it's going to be a, um, uh, a long kind of laundry list that people can pick and choose how they, um, you know, on those, those variety of topics that you've mentioned as well. And so, you know, I think there are definitely collaboration opportunities. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm really trying to do is we do not have to be um, the originator of this content. Uh, there's so much great stuff out there that we can, you know, again, this idea of being a convener and a hub, how do we, yeah. how do we um, build those bridges and, you know, point members to all of those resources. So. I'm happy to do that. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I was, we were, um, so I've, I've worked a lot with the OAA for some reason, like 10 years ago, they came across my stuff and they invited me to come out and speak and done a lot of work with them, the Ontario Association of Architects. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're aware, they recently launched an updated version of their, they offer a, a kind of a practice management course for architects called the Fundamentals of Running an Architectural Practice. No, I didn't know that one. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, so it might be interesting to look at that just to see what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, they bring in, it's a course they offer to their members, and then they bring in different thought leaders. Uh, I was a speaker, so they brought me in for one particular part of it. And it's really nice how they put it together. I think it's about a six-month program that um, that architects in the OA have the opportunity to apply for, and, and they pay for it. And um, and then it's 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 very, very cool. They, they teamed up with the University of Toronto to do it and have the online learning platform and everything like that. So... You know, I thought you might be. Yeah, interested no, to know. I appreciate that. I, I um, again, yeah. we don't need to recreate the wheel. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, great. Well, um, let me know when. Uh, how long? What is the timeline for when these uh, get produced? Yeah, just and... one. Um, I'll have. I'll have. It's probably going to go live probably a little bit over a month from now, if I remember correctly. Looking at the schedule, so it'll be January. Yeah, it'll be in Jan definitely in January. Let me let me double check here because I can I can double check here on the calendar. Let's have a look here. Let's see. And this date might change because sometimes we we swap around a little bit, but. Right now it's scheduled for, bear with me here. Oh, well, we're, we're a lot farther out than I thought we are. You, you'll go live on uh, March, March 6th. Okay. Yeah, March 6th. So okay, well, it'll be a while. I'll, I'll put it on my calendar. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. Well, great. Thank Let you. me Have know if you need anything. Thank you. Happy Thank holidays. you. I will. I will.
Okay. okay. Bye. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye.